Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, I am very excited to be covering Real Housewives of New York Season 3, Episode 10, Leap Before You Look. So the episode starts out with Lou and Sonia. They're getting ready together at Sonia's house. Remember, they're doing the cocktails and couture party. So they're getting ready, and Lou goes downstairs and greets Alex, who's the first to arrive. And right away, Lou is so far up Jill's ass, she can't even talk without being Jill's spokesman. So she's like, darling, what happened the other night? It was horrifying. Remember, Alex had delivered that message to Jill from Bethany saying, we're through, I don't want anything to do with you, that sort of thing. Um, And Lou's saying she was destroyed after that. Now, I will give it... To them that Alex probably should have done that in private. (laughs) Probably not in front of everybody. But I get it. Alex was frustrated. It's hard to talk to Jill. Jill does act like she's in high school. Which will come up later. Um, And uh, yeah. It's just hard to talk to her. And I think she had enough. So she uses this as her opportunity. Um, Alex says. Lou felt the need to scold me for talking to Jill the other night. Alex says that she had a message to deliver. And Lou says, you aren't a mean person. You aren't that kind of girl. And Alex is like, I hear ya. Um, Alex is saying there are things that need to be addressed between her and Jill. So the rest of the ladies arrive. And Sonia comes down. She says, i like to make an entrance. And Jill and Kelly arrive. Kelly asks... Now, something funny I noticed that was happening. All the ladies were dropping off their clothes for charity. The idea being that it goes to this consignment shop. They sell the clothes and donate it um, to charity. And Kelly cannot wrap her head around this. She's like, uh, don't you need to know which who's is whose and who gave what? And Lou's like, no, it's all going to charity. It's okay. And, and, Kelly seems genuinely confused by this idea. Also, right around the nine minute mark, I believe, um, right in this scene, you you actually can hear Sonia mentions the name Tinsley in the background, which is kind of funny. Um, anyway, Alex is saying Jill is doing that thing where Jill is like around her, but not talking to her, like showing her she's not talking to her. Bobby ends up pulling Alex aside. And says that was very out of character for you, you know, and saying that Jill was crying and it's it wasn't your fight. Why would you do that to Jill? Jill doesn't cry that often. She's a strong girl. And, you know, it's awkward for Alex. So she's like, okay, okay, I hear you. I'll go talk to Jill. Well, we go to Jill who's talking about Bethany and she's crying, saying she's worried about the health of Bethany and her baby. And she wants to go to her house, but she isn't welcome. So again, remember, I remember hearing, I believe it was Andy even, saying that Jill thought she had it made this season. She thought she had the best storyline where Bethany was being mean to her and, you know, poor Jill and all this. But it backfired royally because Jill came off looking petty and childish and high school while Bethany was going through these things like the loss of her dad, you know, getting engaged, having a baby. And Jill was so stubborn about it all and ended up becoming like this monster that we see here. So it's just interesting. I think about things like that sometimes. Like, it's just interesting to think about it from that point of view. So Bethany and Jason are on the way to see her dad. He refused to see her initially, but he called her back and said, okay, come So they're going. Ramona's upset because it reminds her of her relationship with her dad. If you remember, it's strained. Bethany's just crying and she's a mess about it all. So then we go to this Gotham Magazine event. They're throwing a party for trend setters slash Kelly. Um, And Alex and Simon arrive and says, you have to keep me away from Jill. You have to be my wingman. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then immediately he goes to sit next to all of them. She's like, what the hell? This is where we see Court. Do you remember Court? Oh, so cringe. He's just so, he makes these faces and he's over the top and he's trying to kiss on Luann. And at that time, Luann was eating it up. Remember the next episode 
is when they go on that awkward date where he's trying to smooch all over her. Kelly gives a speech about styles and trends and whatever's on Kelly's mind. Alex says, Jill turns her attention to me and it's fake, phony, phony, fake. <laughs> Alex just can't deal with it, so she goes to leave. Jill's like, is it something I said? She's such an asshole. Alex and Simon are leaving and as they're walking out, they're like, this is just such a waste of time. Not a very enjoyable evening. So the next day we go over to Ramona's. She has someone bring over a selection of dresses for her to try on for her renewal. Remember, it's all about true renewal, vow renewal, renewal, renewal. <laughs> How many times can I say renewal? She tries on these dresses and she says, I'm going to cry. And she wants to know Avery's opinion on this. And Avery... I can say now as a grown-up, I can't stand her. I don't want to talk about her as a kid, but I'll say she seems much the same. Not much has changed. Ramona is so desperately trying to fish for a compliment from Avery, and Avery's just not into it, not having it, not understanding it. It's actually kind of funny. So then we go over to Bethany and Jason. So it's California, um, and they've just seen her dad. So she thanks him over and over for being so good with her. She says she feels as if there's an end to the story with her dad. She doesn't feel any guilt or anything. This is the hand that she was dealt, and it's just like closing a chapter for her. Again, she thanks Jason for being so amazing. I actually do like to see when they were happy together and in love. I, I don't know. I know they've fallen out, and he sounds like he's a jerk, but... It's sweet to see these scenes. But anyway, so she's, you know, emotional, understandably. And, and she's saying this is allowing her to heal from her past. So then we go to the Four Seasons. And fun fact here, this is where Bethany and Jason end up having their wedding when they get married. Um, Ramona has been married for 17 years. She has invited Sonia and Jill to talk about this. And Jill... <laughs> has a funny to camera scene where she's like, uh, 17 years isn't a milestone. Anyway, R Ramona says she doesn't want a bachelorette party, but she wants to have a girl's weekend, you know, a place to go relax, haha, -ha, and have fun. And I'm laughing knowing the shitstorm that is coming and I cannot wait. You guys, I can't wait. I, I can't wait for <laughs> Scary Island. You can hear the glee in my voice. It'll be so much fun to talk about. Okay, so... Uh, Jill's not sure if she can come because she's arguing with Bethany and Alex. And Ramona keeps saying, you're coming, you're coming. No, really, you're coming, you're coming. <laughs> so, and Jill's like, I don't know, we'll see. So, we'll see how that turns out. So, from here we go over to this Jennifer's apartment. Jennifer is Jill's party planner. So, I'm just wondering, was she trying to be a friend of and it didn't work out? I just... I was surprised that she's hosting an event at her house, you know, on top of showing up to these other events. I just wondered what that was about. Anyway, it's a big, beautiful apartment, and Ramona comes in, and she reveals that she got a very upsetting email that she just read. She tells the group Bethany's dad has passed away last night. Jill gets upset and has this crazy reaction and says, I texted you today. You didn't tell me. And Ramona said, well, I just got her email a little while ago. How can you not tell me? And Ramona says, well, I kept my mouth shut. And Jill says, you open your mouth for stupid things, but something like this, life-changing, you could say something. So it becomes a whole point of contention. Jill, she talks about herself. She loves to know the gossip. So to her, this was gossip, and that'll come up later. But she's pissed that she didn't know. She felt like she should know. So, and Ramona didn't tell her. So they fight, and I don't, it's, it's a whole thing. So Ramona's like, it's between you and Bethany. She, they storm off. They go, uh, Ramona ends up going to talk in the pantry of this woman's apartment about how ridiculous this is that Jill's upset. She comes back out. They kind of make up. It's fine. It's fine. Like, it's just silly. Okay, so then the real highlight of the evening uh, happens when Alex arrives. So Alex comes in and says, I got your text message earlier. So to camera, Alex says, I was floored. She was trying to gossip while someone was dying. 
I tried to tell her how bad death Bethany's dad was doing. Uh, and Alex says, I haven't heard from you. And Jill's trying to say something. And Alex says, you talk all the time. Now it's your turn to listen. Woo! That sets Jill off. She's like, you don't talk to me like that. And Alex is like, Jill. And Jill says, leave. And Alex says, for two years you talk and you never listen. Now it's my turn. And Jill says, go ahead. Alex says, you texted me this afternoon the first time. And uh, you're good at pretending to be nice. Woo! I don't want to hear what you think is wrong with my kids. I don't want to hear what you think is wrong with my house or my husband. And Jill says, we can't be friends then. Alex says, I don't want to be friends. Do you hear that you're not letting me get a word in edgewise? You're in high school. You're a mean girl, and you're in high school. And while you're in high school, I'm in Brooklyn trying to survive in this economy work and working, and it makes me sick. Jill says, we just won't be in the same circle anymore. And Alex says, why don't you get it? You're a wolf in sheep's clothing. They ended up cheersing or clinking glasses. And Alex says, to the end of the gossip. Woo! It was so good. You guys, I go hot and cold with Alex. She's definitely kind of strange. <laughs> but I loved her in this moment. I thought she, she actually did really well. I know she was breaking out in highs, but she handled it so well. And said exactly what I was thinking is, damn, Jill must have a lot of time on her hands, you know? If she's gossiping all the time, talking shit about everybody, and, you know, meanwhile, Alex doesn't want to be a part of it. She's actually friends with Bethany now, and she doesn't want to be a part of this drama, so good for Alex. That's how this one ends. And then we get a flash to next week. And it's part one of Scary Island. Remember Ramona chartered this big boat? And we see this is where the start of Kelly's breakdown happens. Just all kinds of craziness. We see Ramona get completely shit canned and talk about turtle time. I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about it with you guys. It's so much fun. I'm loving rewatching this season. Such a blast. It's I'm just really enjoying it. And I hope you guys are too. Let me know what you think. And I, you know, we'll get on to the next one. I can't wait. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. And I will talk to you very soon. Thank you again for everything. I sincerely appreciate it. Bye-bye.